How much does your coffee maker know about you? We test a lot of products here at Consumer Reports, roughly 3,500 of them each year. And today, more than 25 categories include devices connected to the internet. You've heard of a smartphone, a smart TV, and a smart watch, but that's just the beginning of the Internet of Things. Connected devices now include refrigerators, scales, door locks. Often they're controlled by and communicate with you through an app on a phone, tablet, or computer. But all that convenience comes with a trade-off. Many of these smart products are sending a steady flow of your personal data to corporate servers, where that data can get stored and potentially used in ways you can't control. Your data from different devices could be combined and used by marketers or even stolen by hackers. Let's take a quick tour of some connected devices, and I'll help you understand how they may be collecting your info and tell you some strategies to reduce your exposure. This $150 coffee maker from Mr. Coffee knows your brewing habits. It's one of several Wi-Fi connected appliances aiming to make daily routines faster and easier through an app. Here, you can get a reminder to set up the machine in the evening or change your brewing schedule remotely. Likewise, this connected crock pot knows your cooking habits. With your smartphone, you can adjust the temperature and cook time from practically anywhere. While your coffee brewing and cooking habits aren't the most compromising info, they could give clues as to when you're home and when you aren't. And that info can become the property of appliance makers and app developers. What to do if you're concerned? Well, you can disable the network connection and still make coffee manually but you won't be able to program this machine. The less expensive route, just buy the non-connected version. A good conventional option in coffee makers that our testers recommend is this $40 Mr. Coffee model. It's just as good without the internet. Now, in order to take full advantage of all of their features, some devices need to track your daily habits and movements. Two examples, this thermostat from Nest and this Jawbone activity tracker. For the thermostat, that includes when you're in the house and when you leave. For this activity tracker, it could mean how well you sleep or how much you move during the day. Others can track how quickly your heart is beating and where you're physically located using GPS. Data sent from a tracker to a smartphone app is often unencrypted with the user's name, address, and more. One worrisome scenario? A burglar or stalker armed with that data figures out when you leave the house each day for a run or bike ride. There's no evidence that criminals are routinely using such data now. But if you're troubled by that prospect, these may not be the right connected devices for you. Otherwise, regularly check the manufacturer's website for the latest firmware, which should include up-to-date security patches. Some devices talk to each other. The Jawbone will tell the Nest when you fall asleep, and the Nest will then adjust the room to your ideal sleeping temperature. That means multiple companies may be sharing the information collected by each other's devices, which broadens your data footprint. When it comes to a connected baby monitor or other security camera, an unprotected camera is worse than no camera at all. If you don't lock them down, they're at risk for being hacked or viewed by strangers on the internet, which has happened in several disturbing recent incidents. In fact, this spring, we found a website hosting feeds from streaming cameras that aren't password protected, many inside people's homes. Still, busy parents may be comforted checking their baby's movements or speaking to them via smartphone while away. So what to do? Password protect any connected device that takes video or collects your personal information with a password that's at least nine characters long and has a combination of letters, numbers, and special characters. And don't forget to set up a password on your router too. Another tip, turn the camera off when you're not using it. If it's not live, it's not sending your data to the internet. Want an in-depth look at exactly what info all of these devices are collecting? Read the privacy policy. We know they're long, boring, and can be super hard to understand, especially with something like a smart TV. This policy is 47 screens long, but if you read it, you'll see that the manufacturer reserves the right to track what you watch. And that information could be shared with a third party and used to target ads at you. It's also a good idea to explore the settings menu on your connected devices. There may be a way to switch off features that could potentially compromise your privacy. The Internet of Things is growing as we speak. Here are two connected products we plan on checking out if and when they're available. First, Amazon's Dash program, which uses Wi-Fi connected buttons around your house to let you reorder household items like paper towels and laundry detergent with the touch of a button. Down the road, a connected appliance may do the ordering for you, from Amazon, of course. Second is Hello Barbie, a controversial Wi-Fi connected Barbie on the horizon that could potentially hold conversations with your kids by using remote servers to decode their speech. Consumers may or may not care about being monitored by their appliances or how that info is doled out, but they need to have a choice. And it's not always clear what information stays on a connected device and what goes out to the internet. 
Here at Consumer Reports, we believe manufacturers of internet-connected devices should be very upfront in telling consumers exactly what information these devices are collecting and how that information potentially could be shared, sold, or used. And they should do it in a way that people without a law degree can understand. How does the Internet of Things affect your life? Share your story with us at consumerreports.org.